Welcome back YouTube family. Today we're going to be reacting to some strange and bizarre Simeon Toko TikTok reactions. I'm talking about the kind that's going to have you questioning everything. With that said, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I drop some new hot content that you definitely don't want to miss. And yeah, like you see, I'm rocking the crown today. Yeah, just like that. Uh-huh. Let's get it. Imagine this. It's the 1950s, and there's this man from the Congo named Simeon Toko. People are saying he's invincible. The stories about him are wild. He can heal the sick, raise the dead, and here's the big one, he can't be killed. His followers are convinced he's protected by divine power, but of course the authorities, especially the Portuguese, aren't having it. They heard the rumors and decided to prove he's not as untouchable as everyone thinks. Armed soldiers were sent to kill him, but when they tried, their weapons either malfunctioned or broke. So they devised an evil plan to take out his heart. The idea was simple. If they remove his heart, you can stick a fork in him. He's finished. All to prove that he's just a regular man. So they get him on the operating table and proceeded to surgically remove his heart. And for a moment, they were satisfied. They've finally done it, right? See, he's just a man, like everyone else. But then comes the miraculous moment that defies all logic. Suddenly, in the middle of the surgery, Simeon wakes up. Calm as ever, he sits up and says, Why are you persecuting me? Give me my heart back. Now picture the doctors. These guys are standing there, staring at a man who should be dead, casually asking for his heart back like he just had his wallet stolen. In a panic, they quickly put his heart back in, and to everyone's shock, he's completely fine, like nothing happened at all. But after that, the legend of Simeon Toko grew even bigger. People were now more convinced than ever before that he was a modern-day messiah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Simeon Toko was renowned for possessing abilities of Jesus, including the remarkable power to heal people. But what set Simeon Toko apart is that he repeatedly faced attempts on his life. Yet astonishingly, he managed to reincarnate himself back to life each time. Listen to the end. Have you heard of a man that goes by the name of Simeon Toko? Some people call this dude Black Jesus. Some people call this dude a miracle worker. And a lot of people don't even believe any of this stuff happened. This man was so cold, he even had his own religion called Tokoism. There's a story out there about this man stopping a plane in midair. And no, the plane did not drop. The plane stopped and just stayed there like this. The government tried to kill this man so many times, but he always came back to life. One time they took his heart out. He came back to life. Another They cut off my audio, but I meant to say another time they chopped his body into pieces and he came back to life. But I'm done talking. I'm going to show y'all a video to really explain what this man was doing. The story, the Black Jesus story was probably one of the most shocking things I ever heard. Um, it came from my insider, uh, Jacob, I call him that in the book, who actually was working for the Rothschilds and still does and um, also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing is very necessary to protect us. So the story goes that in the 1960s there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus and uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him, and you know they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine. The crazy story that I heard, which, and, and remember I was told at the time that if I disclosed this that I would be uh, killed and I ended up putting it in the book anyway. Um, the story was that this guy, uh, you know, they finally said, okay, we're going to bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world. Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight, and instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly, and then actually had some kind of meat grinder device 
uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces, put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers, and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world, where then these containers um, uh, turned them into ash. And uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him, like that his body somehow, the tissue was necessary. So if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world, maybe they could defeat him. Well, he then regenerated in, in their offices and was fully fine, fully intact. But the sad part is that he said, you know, I, you guys so badly do not want me to be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want, but bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. I feel like semi Lead that, man. Nine ether being. If you don't know, do your research. Nine ether being. Now, why did they mix up extraterrestrial with? This black man that was named Simeon Toko that they tried to unalive repeatedly and he did not, you know, they did not, they were not successful with what they were trying to do. That's what I'm going to say because I don't want to say the D word I, you know what I'm saying? But why do y'all think that they cannot unalive this man, this being? Was he one of the extraterrestrials or was he something more godly? Was he an angel? I'm very curious of what you think. Let me know down below in the comment section, man. Your opinion does matter. Why did he not give up? Why did he keep coming back? And he said in the near future, he said he will leave because they trying to persecute him. Why, do, why are they trying to do that to him? He could have easily destroyed him. Obviously, if he could do that, you don't think that he could have destroyed him with a snap of the finger? You don't think he had powers to destroy it? That's something you got to think about. He didn't do nothing to, you know, evil to him. He didn't do nothing to defend himself in that moment. But think about this here. He said there would be more just like me in the, in the near future. What did he mean by that? Did he mean extraterrestrials? Or did he mean more non-ether beings? Beings just like him. I wanted to talk about this Netflix series called Supercell. All I know is that there's black people in here gaining superpowers out of freaking nowhere, and I'm here for it. I ain't watch it yet, though. I gotta watch it. Other than that, I want to talk about it because it reminds me of something. It reminds me of this man. This man is known... His name is known to be...
so. Mm, mm, mm. Powerful. I wanted to do a video on a guy named Simeon Toko right quick. I seen a few videos on him on TikTok, but I feel like he's not spoken about enough. And his story is literally top secret. The CIA, the cabal, all of them do not want nobody knowing about him. Okay, so basically he was born in 1918, and throughout the years, he literally was doing things at the Messiah. Was he was performing miracles, doing stuff like that, you know. And basically the cabal, Fatima, you know, the elites tried to come down and kill him multiple times. This photo right here that I'm showing you, they literally cut out his heart one time after killing him. Tried to do a diagram on it as to why he's always coming back to life. And he literally came back to life as they were doing it and asked them why did they have his heart. There was a time where he was on helicopters and literally told the helicopter to stop. And the helicopter stopped. It didn't go back. It didn't fall. It just literally froze up in the sky. Even when he was down in the Congos, he had a ministry to himself that was devoted to him. Literally. Matter of fact, I got a tape recording of somebody actually going into detail on how he literally was refusing to die and chose to die. Literally, he chose to die. I'm about to roll it right now. Very enjoying very much. Thanks. And one of the chapters was um, Nikola Tesla, the Pete Peterson, the Nikola Tesla Black Ops. Yep. Is one of them is about Black Jesus, where he was a sudden being appearing in Africa. Yep. And I just want to know if you know any more information you would share with us yeah uh the black you, jesus story the black jesus story was uh, probably one of the most shocking things i ever heard um it came from my insider uh jacob i call him that in the book who actually was working for the rothschilds and still does and um also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing is very necessary to protect us. So the story goes that in the 1960s there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus. And uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him and you know they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine the crazy story that I heard which and, and remember I was told at the time that if I disclosed this that I would be uh, killed and I ended up putting it in the book anyway um, the story was that this guy uh, you know they finally said okay we're gonna bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight, and instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly, and then actually had some kind of meat grinder device, uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces, put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers, and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world where then these containers um, uh, turned them into ash and uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him like that his body somehow the tissue was necessary so if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world maybe they could defeat him well he then regenerated in, in their offices and was fully fine fully intact but the sad part is that he said you know I, you guys so badly do not want me to be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want, but bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Now, they did this stuff to this man because he was gaining too much influence. Why did people trick him and think, they had him thinking that he was going to the United States? For what I don't know, I know it wasn't to go be with his people or give a message to his people in the United States. When I say that, I mean the Black Americans, the African Americans, you know, saying the Aboriginals in America. Why would he fall for that? Do you think he fell for it? Do you think he know what they was gonna do already? Me personally, I think they are. I think he already knew what they were planning, and he just went along with it anyway. 
Because like I said, they just made his legend even stronger, you know. Why do you think he was not wanted in America? Why do you think they didn't want him to reach America, the United States, with the message that he was bringing? And I say them, I mean the United Nations, the Cabal, whatever, whoever you want to call it. Because didn't, they didn't want him to, <laughs> they didn't want him to, uh, you know, had the African Americans in the United States, you know, rise up and realize who they really are. That's just in my humble opinion. I could be wrong, though, but I doubt it. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Bing bang, social climate. So they've been hiding the fact that there's a fertile crescent. This could be the true Garden of Eden between the Euphrates and the Tigris, the Niger and the Nile. And you have the Congo fertile crescent, KFC. All right, there could be some validity to this. Tell me who Patrice Lamumba is and who Simeon Toko is. If y'all can disprove with those two people, then maybe you got a shot at disproving this. They may have social climate. getting a lot of questions asking what book you can go and find the information on Simeon Toko. This, this is the book. This is the book. And outside of this, it's hard to find information because of course this is things they don't want us to know. But in another video, I will post a video that I found of a man that actually explain the situation, so stay tuned for that video. But in the meantime, you can definitely Google this man, Simeon Toko. For those that wanna or that don't know how to spell his name, I'll place it up here. <laughs> but you can definitely Google him in this information and go on Amazon and buy this book. And again, this book name is God's Secret Christ in Africa, The Truth Will Set You Free. And that is by Melo Zayatu Josias. You can go on Amazon and get that. You know you bless when you can't even make sense of your life. When you got that favor on your life, you can't explain what God is doing. Don't ask me. Yo, what you been up to? You're gonna fucking cave. <laughs> My life is unbelievable to me. Big facts, big facts, big facts, man. That's big facts. Y'all, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I always tell you, I'll see you in the next video. Beat me that on me me though. It's your boy Koozie. I'm out. Holla.